I think, personally, the most important thing in the world of sustainability is to create a sustainable consciousness. Mm -hmm. And by that I mean, our awareness is so narrowly restricted by the very functioning of our brains, by the way we've been educated, by the effects of stress on the brain, mm. that people's comprehension is really quite narrowly restricted to whatever you're paying attention on. It tends to be very short-range, mm. self-centered, and obviously we need a longer-term vision and a broader comprehension. We really want global thinking, global awareness, where we can see the implications of our actions broadly and long-term. That's the fundamental shift that has to take place. Now, the development of consciousness and a technique for transcending, like transcendental meditation, what it does is it takes that narrowly constricted awareness and through techniques it allows the awareness to withdraw from that sharp focus temporarily, mm -hmm. withdraw from that sharp focus and start to expand and relax and withdraw from that focus and expand and expand and expand to become literally unbounded. And that is what you mean by transcending. Yes. Transcending, one way to think about it is the narrowly localized attention start to diffuse and expand and fuse, becomes more comprehensive, more comprehensive, and then completely global, even universal. And then, of course, we're back in activity. But what happens is the expanded comprehension becomes more and more permanent. It affects our thinking, even affects our physiology. For example, even the eyes get used to seeing things very narrowly. Peripheral vision is very blurry for most people. With expanded comprehension and increased parallel processing in the brain, with global EEG coherence, where the whole brain is engaged, literally we have the breadth of comprehension and computing power where we can actually see everything even the periphery. And the eyes begin to adapt to produce more rods and cones outside of the central focus uh -huh. and everything starts to be crystal clear. That's just a symptom of the broader comprehension that comes with regular meditation. That's what's important. Otherwise, you know, you try to teach big principles to people whose awareness is too narrow to absorb those deep principles. And it's a fighting a losing battle. And the principles of sustainability are so important but it's also important that people really get those principles. They resonate with them, and yeah. they act almost automatically in tune with those principles. So now you're describing a method that would sort of automatically turn us into another mode of mm -hmm. operating, mm -hmm. and possibly also another kind of identity. Yeah. Some, some deeper identity that was already there, of course, because you're not adding anything, really, by meditating. You're just you're adding awareness the, of it. Yeah. Adding awareness of it. You're right. Reducing I mean, we the are, by nature, yeah, it's true. Stress physiologically binds the attention. Yeah. I mean, under stress, our higher brain, our expanded comprehension shuts down, and we get into a fight or flight very narrow, yeah. reactive mode. In the absence of stress, the prefrontal cortex starts to function and we start to think more expansively. Long-term thinking. Long-term thinking and planning are entirely due to this, the prefrontal cortex. Under stress, it shuts down. So it is a transformation of the brain and it's a transformation which, it's really nothing more than the expansion of comprehension and I find, as an educator, that people's ability to comprehend big concepts is very limited. Mm. But when the comprehension is expanded, of course, it's all common sense. Yeah. We need to make sustainable behavior, long-term thinking, seven-generation thinking, yeah. common sense for people. And that really does require some culturing of the brain. And as you say, yes, identifying with levels of our reality that are bigger. Yeah. that are global yeah. and not so narrowly personal. Would you have an idea about how this would, would uh, turn out in, 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 in real terms? 
how can we be so unified that we can agree globally in, in, in what needs to be? Because right now, of course, we have corporations fighting environmentalists and we have some countries fighting others. Yeah. The, the United States is very much in the grip of corporate influences and tend to resist many important environmental changes. Yeah, what we really need is to expand the comprehension of everyone, including the leadership. And the way that's going to happen, I believe, and it is beginning to happen, I'm very excited about it, is finally the incorporation of transcending meditation into schools. Now, I work with the David Lynch Foundation, which was created by the, the great filmmaker David Lynch, and that foundation is created to bring meditation to all school children throughout the world. In the last couple of years, about a million children in a thousand schools in the U.S. and South America, mostly. These schools have incorporated regular meditation into the curriculum. Mm. And uh, the whole school have, have adopted it. And the effects on the schools is so extraordinary in terms of academic achievement and graduation rates and suspension rates and so forth that it's spreading so quickly. And I do think um, a million children is quite a lot for the first couple of years, but I think it's going to be a billion children in my lifetime, which pretty means that pretty much means that education everywhere will incorporate actually incorporate techniques to develop the brain and to expand comprehension. Otherwise, we've spent so many years in school, mm -hmm. 10, 12, 15 years in school to develop the brain mm -hmm. and conventional education really does not fundamentally develop the brain. That's what has to change. If we're using 5% of our brain, we're going to get the same result that we've gotten generation after generation. And now we've been mainly talking about the, the ability to think uh, ex uber rationally, yeah. sort of, uh, which is also connected to emotion. We mentioned it the is. stress that, that uh, narrows our, our vision. Exactly. So, so uh, in the bottom, it, it's really it's connected an emotional to change as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because our emotions also, under stress, become so self-defensive. Yeah. And in the absence of stress, what starts to flow more is the unifying value of emotions, generally experienced as love. And love of other, love of environment, love of other cultures, love of the earth, uh, these are all expressions of a more balanced heart and mind. And yes, certainly meditation and, will and restore that. And a natural state when we don't mm. feel separation for some reason. That's right. That's right. Honestly, even enlightenment is just our natural state. Yeah. If you take the fully balanced functioning of the brain, yeah. it's integrated and not chaotic. Enlightenment is the spontaneous side effect of a balanced Right. You're quite right. You're quite right. Thank you very much, My John pleasure. Hagelin. My pleasure. It's Thank good you. to be here with you.